people were complaining again. <laughs> this one, Suzune. Yeah. Like, how, what? How would they adapt this, though? I don't know. Probably, you know, Suzune's imagination. <sighs> Dark room. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what's up, Tiff Nation? It's me, the Tiff Monster here again. We're back with another video of Clash of the Elite Season 3 Honest Feelings slash review. I literally speedrun blitzed it, like, remaining parts of Volume 11. I didn't read all of it, but, you know, like, just scheme through it. So, yeah. First off, what do I feel about this episode? Or how do I feel about this episode? I love it. There's only one rule in love, bring happiness to those you love. Okay, so many people in, in the light novel fandom, you know, they, they're, they're split. Many people were satisfied. Many people were not satisfied. You can't please everyone. <laughs> but uh, me, as a light novel reader, I'm very satisfied because... In the light novel, they didn't really show the moves of the chess pieces. Only some moves, but not all of the moves. In the anime, they didn't show the whole chess match, but they showed a lot of movements. Although I did hear that there are some errors in the anime. I didn't see or notice it. Uh, there are some errors in the, uh, the chess pieces on where their positions are. I didn't know. Or, uh, I haven't really rewatched this episode that much. I only rewatched it twice. <laughs> yeah. After that, I didn't rewatch it again and I didn't even check the mistakes, okay? Yeah, I didn't even look at the, uh, the, the chess pieces. But people have said that there are some errors. But I hope Studio Lurch fixes that. Or I don't know if they really would call it an error because they're going back and forth with the chess match and with their POVs, Sakainagi, Anakoji, and Suzune. Their POVs, like, they're not really showing, you know, all the movements, but they're showing most of the movements. Unlike in the light novel, they were like, oh yeah, move that, move that, move that, like, command him, yeah. <laughs> You serious? To me, that was hype. That was very hype. But seeing the match is much better. You know, seeing the movements is much better. So that is the one praise that I'll give for Studio Lurch in the chess match. Um, for the CGI, it's better than most CGIs nowadays. But still, I would have preferred them to use 2D animation in that scene. But CGI in that in this scene is not bad. They really didn't slack off with the uh, the animations this time. It's a huge team, like right here. This shot is very good. I love this shot. You know, the 3D is not as bad as most CGI's are nowadays. Like they, it's like um, 86, you know, the CGI's there aren't bad. They are really good, so yeah. The CGI here is very good. Not very good, but it's good. <laughs> That's what I meant, yeah. The reason why I said very good is because most CGI's are bad in anime, so yeah. And people really complain about the shot of Suzume. <laughs> it's cute though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boy. They started off some volume zero content, which to me was unexpected. I was only expecting so uh, Saka and Nagi's perspective, but I didn't expect this. Atsuomi Ayano Koji Sensei. Anakoji's father, Kiyotaka's father, to be shown here and provide some volume zero content. Sorry about that. Something popped up. This is interesting. Like I said, this is very interesting. It's a it's a sneak peek of volume zero from anime only viewers. So yeah, I love it. <laughs> and then they showed Sakainagi's perspective. Now it's still kind of volume zero, but yeah, they really went ahead and showed this already. Um, this one in the light novel is prolonged as usual. 
But in the anime, it's always 20 minutes. You have to cram through everything in 20 minutes. Like you have to provide content in 20, more or less than 20 minutes. People are always complaining about that and just people just don't get it. Here's the thing, in light novel, you get a lot of content. You got you have a lot of wordings, you have a lot of things that you you can read. Ayano Koji may fool us readers as well. <laughs> Cause that's the author's doing. And at the same time, like I said in my reaction video, pray for the author Kinukasa Sensei because right now he is very sick. And from what I've heard from his uh, postscript in the year two volume 11, he has hernia right now. And yeah, when I searched that out, I was like, oh God, yeah, that's a very bad. So if you want the author to continue Classroom Daily, sending prayers is the best thing that we can do right now and showing support of this for the series. So, but seeing the fandom right now in the anime community with the light novel readers watching the anime, it's... It's just sad to me because I'm a fan of Clash of the Elite, but I'm seeing toxic light novel readers and they're admitting that White Room flashbacks were great, Sakai Anagi and Ayana Koji 5 was great, but because of the cut contents that they did in their monologues that they didn't even include, because they can't, because it's words, <laughs> it would prolong the episode, it would prolong the anime, <laughs> they are reducing their points or their scores their ratings for the episode just because of that it's just sad to me because i've already said it many times adaptation is so different from a book okay you can't cram everything into one imagine a very thick book like this and adapt it into an anime format like adapt everything including the monologue including the thoughts, the inner thoughts of the character. When you get bored, the point is in adaptations, anime or live action, okay, before we go there, <laughs> there's an error there. In adaptations, anime or live action, you have to cut out things because you are visually representing the inner thoughts that they were saying in the light novel or in the books. It's just ridiculous that people still don't understand that because you have to visualize the wordings. I've already memed this. What if Anna Koji did say, oh, I opened the door for my apartment, my dorm room. Yeah, imagine that. I'm going to open my door for my dorm, for my apartment. What? <laughs> it's basically narration now. <laughs> just do audiobook if that's the case. But you will lose the visual representation. That's what I mean. Okay. In adaptation, you can see the visuals and the creativity in those visuals in art form. I can't believe people still don't understand this. Okay. And I, it's very upsetting. I'm sick and tired of explaining because people will still not understand my point because i am now a part of the film community because i am studying in a film course subjects from what i've gained you know from the knowledge that i've gained from film school it's not just about film it's just it's all about entertainment industry we like the teachers our professors were including the entertainment industry as a whole we were they included animations because it's a part of the film that is why we all know what's happening in film adaptations. And that is why mainstream medias suck. Because the producers are in control, not the directors. They don't have the free uh, creativity. They may have some creativity in the direction sides of things. But the producer will always get the, the end result on what they want. Oh, cut this part out. We don't want them to see that. Yeah. That's mainstream media. What is Clash of the Elite? Anime. Mainstream media. It's not independent. It's a mainstream media because they have a producer, Kadokawa. Okay? Understand that... Let's try to use violence as a last resort. Get it! I kill you! 
kill you. I'm tired. I am so sick and tired of explaining this because people will disregard what I'm saying. Okay? And I am so serious about this conversation right now. I'm explaining it to all of you. And for those of you that are open-minded and understand what I'm saying, thank you very much because you guys you guys are open-minded to what I'm saying. I may have some disappointments with the anime, but it doesn't mean that I hate the anime adaptation of Clash of the Elite. Even the author doesn't hate the anime adaptation, okay? Like I said, they the authors are the consultants, which means they are seeing the anime adaptation ahead of us, okay? The creativity in the team, but that doesn't mean he's the boss, okay? Because he's getting paid as well. <laughs> Because of the adaptation. Because it's his right, you know, to get paid because it's his original work. So the producer will pay the author, Kinugasa Sensei. I'm so tired of all of this. Sorry that I'm expressing my genuine frustrations of the fandom right now. It's I want to do a video about Classroom of the Elite's state right now at the moment. The state of Classroom of the Elite. No hate, no anger. Get off you, maggot! I will kill you, flying rat! And it's not just Clash of the Elite anime light novel. It's about the fandom as well. Okay, I want to do that video, like, seriously. I am so tired of toxic people. Who wants toxicity? What the hell, man? Here we go. Here's an error that the uh, most people saw and I didn't even see it on my first watch <laughs> what the hell where is Hirata why is there two fat fat guy here <laughs> I forgot his character name. I'm sorry <laughs> anyway yeah here's the roster and uh, the numbers are correct it's 23 because Ayano Koji is excluded because he's the commander Yamauchi is gone so yeah 23 students are here I counted that yeah, but Hirata is missing. <laughs> Fix this in the Blu-ray Lurch. I'm pretty sure they will though. Their conversation was shortened in the light novel before they chose the events. Sakagami Sensei, was it? Yeah, <laughs> the class D teacher, Ryuan's class teacher. Or prof yeah, and Hoshinomi Sensei, class B's teacher, is there to supervise. They're overhearing Ayano Koji and Sakayanagi's, uh conversation and they always play along with their conversation Sakanagi is always playing with Ayana Koji kinda like they're being petty and Ayana Koji was playing along as well that oh yeah I'm dumb I'm a fool yeah I'm only following Susan's orders Rikita's orders yeah yeah he's she's the mastermind yeah I'm only doing this because I have the protection point yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> they're being super petty <laughs> They're fooling the teachers, yeah, to hide the fact that Ayano Koji is the mastermind in their class. So, this one, okay, the basketball. So, in this one, in the basketball event in the light novel, they have five players. But since the anime only has 25 students, they had to cut out two characters. And in the light novel, they changed things up. They were able to swap, right? Remember that? But, okay, the slideshow, it was accurate. They didn't even show it in the, or they didn't even uh, describe it, you know. Like, oh, yeah, they earn point. Yeah, they shoot a point. And, yeah, Class C is in the lead. Yeah. So, <laughs> it's accurate that they only showed slideshow. <laughs> so, yeah. Until Sudo comes in, that's where the light novel actually, you know, described what's happening and that is where the anime changed it in the light novel from the light novel because in the light novel it's not hondo that gets swapped out it's ek <laughs> okay what what the fuck and then this one it's pretty much accurate but your boy roshi actually pointed this out that uh how the hell is this court so long? <laughs> but they showed the animation here, the budget that they have. And then this one, in the anime, they changed this. This scene alone has been changed from the light novel. In the anime, they showed this. Pseudo's play, 
passing it to EK and then onto Onodera and then Onodera shoots. That's different from the light novel. From the light novel, because in the light novel, Sudo charged in and dunked, from what I remember, he dunked the basketball. He dunked the ball and he scored. And then he shouted when they won. Uh, Sudo shouted, I did it, Horikita. Or I did it, Suzune. Yeah. It's like basically showing that uh, Sudo is a simp for Suzune, Horikita. And at the same time, he wants to show off. <laughs> But in the anime, they showed Sudo as being cooperative. And that is why when I saw that in the light novel, I was like, wait, the anime made it much better. <laughs> what? They showed Sudo's character development so much, visually representing Sudo's character development. To me, that... It was perfect. That is... <laughs> Thank you, Lurch, for actually changing that because... In the light novel, I really can't visualize, like, Sudo being, you know, this fool charging in and then dunking it. Unlike in the anime, look at this. Look at this play from Sudo. Look at, bro, bro look at this play from Sudo. Yeah. Mm hmm Pass that to EK and then pass it to Under and then Under shoots. Yes. I love that change. <laughs> okay. And then that's that. And then the typing test, yeah, basically they described it so much in the light novel, but it's all the same. But in the English test, they pretty much, um, they didn't explain it, but Ayana Koji from Horikita's instructions, or Susan's instructions, sorry about the dog bark. Out of the three tests, math, literature test, and English test, out of the three, two of them they should win, at least, and, uh... One of the tests they should lose. That's why Ayana Koji chose English as the one, the event that they will lose. That's why he, she, he chose the most, the stupidest of the class. K, Sato, Shinohara, etc. You all know. You all know they're dumb, right? So, um, yeah. Okay. And then math test. This is the math, right? Yeah, the regular math test. They, uh, Ayana Koji picked Kushida, Mi uh, Michan, and Hirata, and Yukimura. Basically, the talented, uh, intellectual students, but they still lost. So, yeah. Anyway, and then comes archery. It's pretty much also f uh, fast paced in the light novel. So, yeah, they only showed Akito. Yeah. And then flash mental math, flash mental arithmetic. Yeah, this is all the same. <laughs> and although Ayana Koji muttered something in this scene, these dogs are so stupid in the middle of 3 a.m. <laughs> One eternity later. Ayana Koji muttered something here. He muttered, uh, uh, I guess my plan backfired, huh? <laughs> because Koji went his. <laughs> <laughs> That's that. <laughs> yeah. And then Matsushita's face. Look at that. <laughs> and then there comes the ma flash mental arithmetic math. Basically all almost the same because they only cut out some parts. And they included a foreshadowing moment here. Matsushita looking at the 10th question and Ayano Koji got it right. Matsushita's involvement in the next episode or so. Or in the last episode, so yeah. And then comes chess. And then they actually, the direction in this episode is very well done. I gotta give props to the director in this episode because it's so great. I don't know if the director of the anime is the one that directed this particular episode as well. So I gotta check later. But yeah, from what I've seen, it's the same director as the, the Ichinose backstory the um episode one and um the um the peak episode eight so yeah and hirata's backstory right yeah basically the director in this episode basically directed the peak episodes of flash and delete <laughs> yeah so they showed some bits of volume zero slash volume 11 monologue of sake and Aki. yeah and then i'm glad that they are actually showing this because this is very well needed for Saka and Nagi's character and what her true motivation is. And that is for Ayana Koji to actually feel the warmth of a human 
a human touch, you know? And I'm glad that they adapted this so well. This is the also the one thing that I love about this episode. So, yeah, thank you, Lurch, for actually adapting this episode super well. And if you might be wondering, why didn't they adapt the Ryuin versus Ichinose fight? I'm pretty sure they will adapt that in the next episode, but we'll have to wait and see. I haven't seen the preview yet because there's no preview yet in the next episode. <laughs> and they only showed Ayarakoji versus Sake and Nagi's fight because it would lose their momentum on the hype of Sake and Nagi versus Ayarakoji. Okay? So... The direction to not include Ryu and versus Ichinose is actually very good because your hype for this fight will get lost if you include Ryu and versus Ichinose. So I'm glad that they only adapted this. So yeah, but I'm pretty sure they'll adapt Ryu and versus Ichinose. Uh, I'm only gonna say something about that, say some things about that. But uh, yeah, if you don't want to get spoiled, click away on that one later. So yeah, I'll tell you guys later. Anyway. This is so peak. They also changed this. I prefer the anime. I can't believe I'm saying this again. Because, like I said, when I rewatch episode 12 of season 2 every time, I prefer that one over the light novel. <laughs> you what? Okay, my reasoning is the lighting, the composition, and the direction and the animation, the visuals in that episode were so peak. Much better than the light novel. Because if it is in the rooftop, it would be so bland. Oh yeah, sky. In the anime, they showed, uh, you know, the atmosphere. The, the mood, the setting in that scene is much better. So that's why I prefer the anime in that scene. And in this one, in the chess match, I prefer the anime again. <laughs> Okay, because they showed moves from the chess pieces. Okay, they didn't even make it lazy because in the light novel, they are the author didn't really explain it. So yeah, they didn't. He, the author didn't even describe the movements. By the way, I forgot. Um, yeah. So um, there's a change as well on the Ayanagoji versus Sake Nagi. They were uh, facing each other. Not really because the monitors are at the front so they technically can't see each other so that is why when i said that i prefer the anime on the aana koji versus sake nagi battle is for that reason as well they're beside each other and so they can see each other uh, you know while fighting you know, as the commander so in a way i feel like that has more tension and i think that sets up the mood for their fight so to me the lighting the position changed and yeah the anime's direction so far have been super well done like i said so yeah the differences in the light novel and the anime so far have been very good but at the same time they are doing something that is not good compared to the light novel so like i said i am uh liking the changes in the anime and sometimes i am not liking the changes in the anime so this is one example that I love the change in the anime, just like the Ryuin versus Ayana Koji fight. The atmosphere and the setting in the Ayana Koji versus Ryuin fight was very good. And uh, the rotoscoping, everything, the animations, the visuals carried that fight alone. Along as well as this particular fight, Ayana Koji versus Sake Nagi was one of the best they have ever adapted as well. That is just my own opinion though, so yeah, you can have your own preferences, but to me, this is definitely a great direction from the director, so I really give them props for giving us a very entertaining fight, and the change they made for this scene is really what stands out to me. At first, I was really mixed on the change, but now that I'm re-watching it, you know, every time I... It really grew on me and it feels like it's so much better than the light novel. So yeah, like I said, people were underwhelmed in that fight in the light novel. But in the anime, they made it very interesting. And plus, they, o they also changed this scene because they don't have headsets. Okay? They only have a monitor. Which to me, I prefer. Because if they have headset, what? <laughs> it would look weird. And at the same time, the monitor is much better because seeing on how they would move it not just hearing it oh gx f5 yeah 
So I prefer this one, the change, the mood, the setting in this scene, and plus it's just peak. Yeah, they pretty much prolonged this fight in the anime and I pretty much love it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they showed this. They didn't show it in the light novel though, which I prefer. <laughs> Although, people have complained that, uh, yeah, what the hell, this fight is not even true genius. Duh, it's only 800 ELO, huh? <laughs> Damn! If you know what ELO is, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, ELO, ELO, yeah. If you don't know what ELO is, it's like basically a power ranking or power rating. Basically your power in chess, you know, your strength, or uh, if you have a higher ELO from what I remember, then... You're very, very good in chess. So that's the thing. I'm not really a good chess player. I only play chess for fun because my cousin back in the day loves playing chess and I'm basically a loser at chess. So <laughs> I don't even know. So yeah, pro chess players were complaining that, oh, this sucks. This gameplay sucks. You guys have to remember the players that started this off was Hashimoto and Suzune. They were beginner in chess. <laughs> they were basically beginners. Suzune only played chess for a week, and Hashimoto got started in playing chess for a few months, right? So yeah, from what he said. If you get my point, this is basically why the uh, the flow of the game is, a, is much of a beginner, and that's where Ayana Koji and Sakainagi uh, implemented the beginner slash genius moves of a beginner gameplay. You get that? So yeah, to me, I accept that. However, if um, they wanted to show a true genius masterclass movement, then I think um, hiring someone from a pro chess player then would have been better. Just like what they did with episode 12 of season 2. But still though, I'm not complaining. But people, pro chess players are just ve very, you know, triggered by that. Uh, I'm not though. <laughs> What do you mean, huh? <laughs> I'm not a pro. I'm not very pro at chess. <laughs> Would an idiot do that? Yeah, it's pretty much accurate. Yeah. And then it's so hyped that they play the opening because it's so thematic. Yeah, and then this one. I don't like this subtitle, Superior Specimens. I prefer Musacious subtitle here. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. This is why Saka and Nagi wants to prove something, and that is being a genius isn't uh, something that you were supposed to be created. You were born with it. So basically, that's what Saka and Nagi is proving. You know, that's why she wants to beat Ayana Koji. She had a goal in mind. She's pitying Ayana Koji, and in a sense. So yeah, that's why she wants to let Ayana Koji feel the warmth of a human touch. So yeah, that's why this episode is very heartwarming. And uh, even though it's a fight, it's very heartwarming in the end. So yeah. Although in this one, it wasn't an inner thought moment of Susan here. It was basically Susan is shouting at the Uh <laughs> To me. I feel like I prefer the anime because that would over exaggerate. Suzune, stop being, stop throwing tantrums. <laughs> yeah, I prefer this one. <laughs> I prefer Suzune like pleading deep inside that Ayan Koji, I, I don't want to lose. I want to win. Like visually seeing her, you know. Like with those eyes, like the desperation of uh, Suzune wanting to win against Sake and Nagi, Class A. Yeah, I prefer the anime in that one. So, yeah, I prefer, okay? That doesn't mean many people prefer that, okay? And then, yeah, the, the blunder, the mistake, or should I say the intervention, <laughs> the interference of Tsukishiro. Yeah, the white room flashbacks were peak. And I think that's the highlight of this episode and the chess match. So yeah. That's all the highlight. And then Tsukishiro, the scene, they adapted this very well again. So yeah. And then Q, his uh, movement was QXF5, right? Oh, G5. QG5. QX? Q5. 
huge G5. So basically, they showed it though in the end, the real movements. They also did the check, uh, check, chess analysis in YouTube. It's pretty much a, a genius move for a beginner. However, you have to actually analyze that they weren't the ones that were playing from the beginning. Remember, Ayana Koji tutored Suzume in that short amount of time. So, Ayana Koji can only uh, teach Suzune beginner things, beginner tutorials, because <laughs> it's only a week. And then for Saga and Nagi, I think she taught Hashimoto as well, only beginner plays. That's why, if you notice from their conversation, uh, Suzune and Hashimoto's conversation that uh, Hashimoto was taught by Saka and Nagi, and then she was taught by Ayana Koji, so, yeah. Anyway, Ayana Koji sacrificed the queen, by the way, and, yeah. Sacrificing the queen doesn't mean that you've lost, okay? Because even though the queen is the most powerful in chess, that doesn't mean that you've already lost. As long as you have all the the chess pieces that you need, either it's a bishop, rook, or a knight, you can checkmate still, even without the queen. I think that's what they're basically showing is that even though they sa even though Ayana Koji sacrificed the queen, he can still win this. So that's what they showed, and I'm glad that they showed it. So yeah. And then this scene, yeah, I pretty much love this scene because uh, it's uh, this one right here. Oh, yeah, by the way, um, they didn't adapt this illustration. <laughs> People were crying about it as well, again. People were complaining, again. <laughs> this one, Susan A. Yeah. Like, how, what? How would they adapt this, though? I don't know. Probably, you know, Susan A's imagination. <sighs> Dark room. I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> but they only adapted that in the uh, the project trailer. Anyway, I'm not complaining though. They showed a lot of good stuffs already, so I'm not complaining. Why am I being very picky in that one though? <laughs> Although my only complaint was the bench scene because that's the one thing that I want to see, <laughs> but they didn't. Yeah. Anyway, this scene. Yeah, this is this. Hey, <laughs> love it. Although they didn't show them walking, like. Uh, at the back, you know, the back pose. They showed pretty much everything here. Yeah. People were also overthinking that. How can Saka and Nagi stand? <laughs> From what I remember, Saka and Nagi wasn't really, you know, super crippled. She can stand, but barely. With some support, or at least just stand still, you know. But walking... She needs at least the support, a support, a cane. That's what she has. That doesn't basically mean that her legs aren't working. Her legs don't have strength, <laughs> okay? Because from what I remember uh, in year two, volume 11, how can Ayana Koji drag Saka and Nagi with holding hands and Saka and Nagi was just holding her cane? Okay. This scene was heartwarming. This is, yeah. This was a peak episode for me. Anyway, if you're wondering about the um, the Ryuan versus Ichinose, click away if you don't want to get spoiled. Unless they aren't going to show it in the next episode, so keep in mind. Anyway, Ryuan versus Ichinose. Ryuan basically played dirty. <laughs> okay. Um, Ryuan won five events. Their class won five events. However, in the first two events, Ichinose won. But it's all Class B's events. And then the next three events were... Huh, huh, class D. And then that's where Ichinose lost. Consecutively. So, yeah. You want to know why? Because Ryuen put laxatives on the Class B students. And that is why Class B students, most of the Class B students that Ichinose picked cannot participate because they are feeling sick. <laughs> they are in the restroom. <laughs> Ryuan played dirty. <laughs> and that's what I love about him. <laughs> He's doing everything that he can to absolutely win. That is why Ryuan is one of my favorite characters. I'm pretty sure they'll adapt that 
somehow as a flashback probably or probably just show some bits of it in the next episode so my rating for volume 11 if they're not gonna adapt that i'm gonna i don't know man but anyway i'm gonna i'm just gonna rate volume 11 as a whole but i'm gonna rate this episode first episode 11 of clash middle east season 3 how would i rate it uh, well my rating is a 9.5 out of 10 it's a solid 9.5 out of 10 almost near perfect for me because there are some minor nitpicks from me and plus the errors that we've all seen um yeah fix that <laughs> fix that lurch <laughs> i'm not trashing lurch okay because as a filmmaker i also make errors okay um we only notice them once we view it because even though we viewed it a lot of times we sometimes overlook that error that is why i can completely understand lurch making some errors just that 9.5 out of 10 they mostly focused on the Yanakoji versus Sake and Nagi and the White Room flashback. And that's what I wanted from this episode. Only focus on these two for now. Because if you showed Ryu and versus Ichinose, that would really lose the momentum of the episode. So yeah. And then, as for the rating of Volume 11. If, uh... As long as they adapt the Ryu and versus Ichinose fight at least a bit, then yeah. I will rate it a 9 out of 10. It's not the best adapted volume. Um, I think, yeah, volume ten is still the best adapted volume. Volume eleven was super rushed. If you wanna, if you wanna read it, then go ahead. I mean, they left out the teachers talk with Tsukishiro. They left out some details about the test. You know, the 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 important details as well, and uh, the foreshadowing of. Ryuwen, you know, class D stalking class B students. That is basically Ryuwen's play from the get go, and yeah, that is why it's already a foreshadowing that the tyrant will return in that moment. So, uh, yeah, they really lost it there. They really Lurch didn't adapt uh, Ryuwen's uh, foreshadowing. Anyway, nine out of ten for volume eleven. I'm very satisfied with the chess match. People were some people were unsatisfied or some people were dissatisfied with the adaptation. I'm not. Uh, it's just that there are some minor nitpicks from me, and uh, yeah, the bench scene. I why? <laughs> and plus, kore de i. 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 Why? <laughs> Anime only viewers will perceive that kore de i or that this will do. That should do it as uh, an edge lord, an edgy way of saying yeah i manipulated you but to us light novel readers that's why if you've seen my reactions from that kore dei i'm not really reacting to it oh manipulation because it's not if you've read the novel that is okay that is why i'm not like yo ayana koji is crazy manipulating yeah, no. <laughs> that is why I always kept a poker face. Or because I know what Ayana Koji is doing. It's like summarizing that, uh, yeah, this will do. That This is enough for now. Because it's enough for this character. Like, it's enough for K Because she's been through enough. And that's enough for Ichinose. Because that should set it up for the next time that we meet. And then this is... This will do for Hirata because he's already broken and I want to stay by his side because, uh, you know, perceive it however you want. But uh, yeah, anyway, that is all for now, though. It's been a long video right now, so I'm sorry. <laughs> and it's 4 a.m. Oh, my God. Anyway, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm sorry that uh, I've been very serious on, like, the very first half of this video because... I'm very sick and tired of the toxic fans. And if you're not satisfied with the anime, don't watch it. Some light novel readers don't watch the anime. Believe it or not. And I thank them for that. If you don't appreciate the anime, if you don't appreciate the visuals, that's fine. Don't watch it. Okay? Watch the scenes that you want to see. Basically, that's it. If you're that kind of light novel reader and want to stick with the books, go ahead. I'm not a bookworm, okay? <laughs> that is why I chose filmmaking. I'm more on the visual side of things. Although I read books, 
that doesn't mean I'm a bookworm, okay? That's why I also understand the side of the adaptations by Studio Lurch, okay? They only can adapt 13 episodes because that's what Kadokawa provided. I don't blame them for that, and they had to cram a lot. Anyway, that is all for now, though. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all uh, understood by now, and uh, yeah, I'm sick and tired of the toxic community. And uh, yeah, if you're dissatisfied with some things, that's completely fine. But if you're going to hate on the anime, I don't want you in my community, okay? What I want from my community, if I ever do a giveaway with Clash with the Elite, because so far, it's very good on my channel, except for episode one. That's the only one that has not reached the 50 likes goal and 1,000 views. So yeah, <laughs> keep an eye on that one. Um, yeah, if I ever do a giveaway of Clash with the Elite, I'm only going to give away uh, Volume 1 of Year 2 to people that are actually enjoying the anime and are enjoying the light novel. Literally a fan. Like I said, my professor and her uh, sister watched um, a movie together and it's from a, a novel. I, don't, I can't remember which one that is. Um, but basically, her sister... My teacher's sister was like, Oh, the, the book didn't really... Yeah. Ah! But then, you know, uh, our professor is a filmmaker, so she understands what the film is trying to do. <laughs> Th this contradicts things, okay? That is why I, I perceive things from a filmmaking entertainment industry perspective and at the same time as a light novel reader. If I'm, un I'm, if I'm dissatisfied with things... I'm going to say it out loud. Like I said, the bench scene. Why didn't they adapt that famous scene? Or that famous illustration? I don't understand. At the same time, people were like, they didn't adapt this one. <laughs> you missed it. <laughs> go back to episode 9. <laughs> yeah, go back to episode 9 and you'll see that famous illustration. <laughs> they adapted it so early. I hope people have now come to understand adaptations okay at the end of the day adaptations are money talk okay if you're entertained very good if you're not entertained suit yourself <laughs> okay because the thing about a uh, visual representation visual adaptation is that you can do things creatively like I said it's a form of art okay they can add a lot of visual elements that cannot be uh, conveyed in the books in words alone okay and that's the power of visual adaptations okay the creativity okay in visual form in the light novel the power of the words described in the book okay that's the difference that's all you need to do that's all you need <laughs> for adaptation and book when will people understand this? Like, when? When will people understand this? I am so sick and tired of it. This will be my last time saying or advocating how visual representation is, okay? How visual adaptation are. Anyway, uh, I'm sorry for being very pessimistic about this now because it's just to me i don't want toxic community okay if you're dissatisfied with things but seeing you're dissatisfied most of the time if not all the time with the adaptation why watch it don't you have anything greater things to do in your life why waste your time to something that you're not really fond of think about that <laughs> anyway thank you guys so much for watching i'll catch you guys on the next one yeah Volume 11.5, yay, two episodes, or probably one and a half episodes. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching. Catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.